Great, so by the end of this video, we should have uh, made a road which follows the terrain, just like this one. And we should have created uh, this parking right here, and then also imported this uh, building to the site. And then finally put a, a boundary wall which follows that terrain, like you can see right there. All right, so in order to follow along, I recommend that you do first the first part of this tutorial, which uh, shows you just how to generate this mesh right there. Okay, let's get started with this video. Hi everyone, it's Nalan and welcome to Nazitech Studio. If you are new to this channel, I recommend that you do subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and let's just begin. In order to create a, a road on a sloping terrain, it's such a big challenge and I'm going to share with you the technique that I do like to use. First, I'm going to use a slab in order to create something along where the road is supposed to be. So I'm going to go to design tab here and pick a slab. And I'm going to use a basic slab. Well, everything else doesn't matter now. I'll just take take this and begin to draw along to where the survey port uh, demarcates as the road. All right, so once I have that ready, I am going to need a section to see where that road is. Let me create a basic one. Just, I open it. So this is what we do have, that's the terrain, and this is where my road is. So I am going to use a simple technique and it will require me to just uh, have this road way down. So let me drop this road by about just below this one. This one is 1.2 below here. So let me make this about 1.5. I just need it below this actual slab. So now this is the road that I'm supposed to do. So in order for me to create a terrain, I am going to just get this existing mesh and make a copy of it. So control D and then control again to have that plus right there. And then I will make a copy which is going to be just slightly below the existing one. I'm going to move it down by 50. Now, once I have done that, I'll go in the settings of that one and on the top surface, I'm going to make it pavement asphalt dark because that is going to be my road. Now, after doing that, I want to go in 3D so I show you what is actually happening. So here I have two mesh, meshes, mesh. Uh, I have one which is right here and another one which is right there. I hope you can do see them. So as you can see here in the outlines, we have this top one, which you are able to see, but there's this one, which you have, you aren't able to see. So what I'm going to do, let me go back to the section. I'm going to use as this as a, an, an operator. So let me select what I want to cut. I'm going to select this top mesh, right click, connect solid solid element operations and that is being picked as the target. So if I come here and select this slab, which is supposed to be the road, it's going to be the operator and choose the operation to be subtraction with upward extrusion. Yeah. And then I'll say execute. And what that actually does, you can see that I am cutting through the top one and now this one is the one which is revealed which I made to be the road and when I go to 3D watch what happens huh I have the road there pretty cool huh and it looks pretty good so the reason why I like this kind of method I know there are so many ways in 
to create this but the reason why i like this is that uh, in case i would like to add anything for example i need this road which goes down to where this residence is going to be so i'm going to bring it and put it uh about where i need it and actually let me bring the whole of this where this thing is supposed to sit so i will bring this and this is where my residence is supposed to be. Yes, something like that. So I will position this correctly right there. So this road is supposed to go down. So I'm going to hold to get this slab right here and just add this section here. I will say plus. And this, I create this and I am done. So if I go to 3D, I already have that nice road which uh, follows the terrain downward. And now let's import in the building. So for us to import the building, we need to create a slab where it's supposed to sit. So currently this, this, this is the building and I need to create a slab around it. So I'll just use a basic slab and it needs to start where the uh, building stops. So it's <clears throat> the building stops at about negative 450 and I can choose uh, maybe what uh, wood, upper K, upper K flooring material. And I'm going to go ahead and define where my building is supposed to sit something like that not so not so bad i need something uh, around there like that so i'm going to take a copy right here such that i refine it from somewhere here without bringing the building yet so let me bring that point to where it's supposed to be so i need something like that and also, I need to design this other portion. I like to have it follow the site. So we will leave an offset, of course, but um, the retaining wall here is supposed to follow the shape of the site. So I will chamfer this by about three meters, I guess. And that's good for me. So I will need this section in order to position that right so obviously uh you can see where the building is supposed to be and i think instead of uh, bringing in the building and taking it up let's have the building start from here so let's take everything else down so i'm going to select everything except my slab and then i come to in line with this i mean actually let me use a even a guideline here so I see what I'm doing. I'm going to select everything and deselect this one. And I'm going to move this part right here to from, from the topmost. I move it all the way down to there. Yeah, something like this. I think it's what I do need. And in 3D, I need to, to just use this as the operator. So I'll, I'll select this, right click, connect, so connect, and then solid element operations. And then I pick this as the target. And then this as the operator. And the operation is going to be upward X. X Intrusion, then I say execute. And this is what we get. Well, obviously, we also need to cut through the second one. So it's important that we also do the same for this other one right there. So you pick that as the target and this as the operator. And then execute. And that's just about it. That's where the building is going to sit. And right about now, we can just 
uh, drag the whole thing and bring in, bring it right there. So actually I did group it in order to have it easily transported. So I'll just uh, take one of the corners, which I am sure about, something like that, and I'll put it right there. And the job is done. Of course, not yet. Because we have just, because we have just a few things, for example, we have a water feature right here, which we want to um, take care of. And in order to do so, we need to create a different element for it. So I'm going to select my slab and remove that area right there. Because we need to see that pool thing. So I'm going to remove all of this and recreate it using the same slab. Just recreate it around there. And I'm going to use my section, go back here. And then when I do open it, I have things going on here. I need this slab that I've just created to go down uh, under the feature, the water feature that I did create. So obviously it needs to be the operator now. And now this, these two slabs, now I can select them all at once because I know how it behaves. And then I say, get them as targets. And then I say, execute when there is subtract with upward extrusion. And that is job done. Pretty cool. So in 3D, we have something like that, which is pretty impressive. And now let's also do the same thing for the parking area. So for the parking area, I do know where it is going to be. I'll pick this slab and maybe I might take it a little bit downer. I'll add like 100. So this will be negative 550. I take it a bit down and maybe for it will have a different finish. Maybe asphalt light. And then I go in and begin to draw. So, so I draw all the way from there up to there. And uh, let me see what it looks like. Yes, it's something like this. And in order for it to work functionally, I'm going to, to do the operations. Well, because it, the, it takes so long in 3D, I'm going to use my 2D like I did before. So I will open it and set it as the operator and then set these two meshes as the targets. And with the substructure with up, upward extrusion selected, I will execute and that has been removed. And I have something nice here. Although I need to treat this part differently because uh, I need a smooth transition from right here up to there. And in order for me to create that, I'm going to use to another one more element, which is going to be, so I will select this slab and move it back by about, I think three meters will be enough to make this transition. And for that, I will use another material. And in 3D, that's what it looks like. So I need to create the transition there. I will go to, to the mesh here and create this other material, which is supposed to also start at negative 550. It was about negative 550. And I'm going to make this one asphalt dark and I'm going to use uh, everything else. I think the way it is. And I'll say, okay, so I come and place it in right there. So for this mesh, I will do the same operation. So let me bring this right here, open it, set this, set this as the operator and these two as the targets. And then I execute, which will do away with everything else. And so now we have that which is going to help us do this transition. And I will need to move the points. So this top hat, I can work even in 3D, take it down, 
I bring this part, take it up. And by the way, I can also in 2D uh, try to smooth this out because, you know, it's a road. It needs to be smooth. So I can smooth out this other side using this uh, icon right here. So I can create that smooth one. And then also trying to mirror this and make sure that this is yeah 1.3. I can use the same this other side and smooth it out by using that curvature. All right, so in 3D, I do have to move the points to where they are supposed to be. And that looks much nicer. Click this point. And with the elevate node selected, I can elevate that to that point right there. And as well, grab this one, take it down here. So we have this nice smooth uh, transition from all the way there to there, which is very beautiful. Now, finally, we want to bring in the boundary wall, which I did create. So if you haven't watched how to use the railing tool to create the boundary wall. I recommend this video right here. So go and watch it. And I'm going to use that boundary wall that I did create. So with the railing tool selected, I am going to come and begin to draw. Let me begin from somewhere right here. So I'll come in and just draw a basic shape around the site. And of course, uh, it needs to leave a, a road reserve. So I'll make sure to bring this stuff backward. All right, that's just about enough. And in 3D, I can go ahead and uh, manipulate how high this stuff is. So this is in space and obviously I need to take some of this stuff, move it with the shift to keep it in Z axis, bring it down here. I navigate to the next point. And uh, of course this one has a valley from around here so we can create another node here. I'll click and take this down. That looks just about right. And on this other side, I need to take this up. So lock it to the Z axis and take it all the way to somewhere like there. And finally this point. Well, obviously it's starting to slow down because uh, we are doing heavy stuff in 3D. But uh, you get my point. That's uh, just about all you need in order to be able to create this uh, amazing uh, topographical thing. So thanks for watching and I'll... Uh,